Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to actually go through the steps of provisioning an EC2 instance. So a step-by-step -step guide of how to launch an EC2 instance, as well as how to log into the EC2 instance using the SSH protocol. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is navigate to the EC2 instance console where I already am and then click on launch instance. This is how we're going to launch an on-demand instance. I need to select an AMI for which I'm going to select the Amazon Linux AMI. We're going to keep everything we do free tier, so I'm going to select the general purpose T2 micro instance type. And here for configuring instance details, we haven't gone through this page yet, but I'll briefly run through these options now. Up top here, you can select to create more than one instance during this process. So if you wanted to create three, four, five, or 10 copies of this instance at the exact same time, you can do that here. For network, this is where you select the VPC that you want to launch into. And for subnet, this is where you can select the subnets or one specific subnet that you want to launch the EC2 instance in. So I wanna make sure, since this is going to be a public facing EC2 instance, meaning that I want it to have access to the internet, I need to launch it into one of my two public subnets because it's the public subnets that are associated with a route table that has a route to the internet gateway. Here for auto assign IP address, it is going to use the default settings for the subnet, which is enabling auto assign of public IP address, but you can always change that here depending on various settings. For the rest of these, I'm gonna leave them as default. However, what I'm going to do next is down here under advanced details. And this is not something you have to do, this is an option, but I'm going to have it run the following bash script and what this does is it allows us to run some commands and install software and updates during the configuration process of the EC2 instance. So all this is doing here, these are just some Linux commands. It is going to update the YUM installer and then install the Apache web server. Now what this is going to do is it will allow us to test the internet connectivity of our EC2 instance. And I'll show you that when we get to that point later in this lesson. Next, we wanna add storage. By default, we must have a root volume. I'm going to leave it as general purpose SSD with a size of eight gigabytes but I'm going to add an additional volume just for demonstration purposes to this EC2 instance so that we can then go in later and take a look at how that reflects in the EC2 console. Next, if you'd like, you can add a tag. You don't have to, but I will put in a value here just so we can give the instance a name. Next, we have to configure our security group. So, while selecting a security group for the instance, you can either create a new security group or select an existing security group. For existing security group, we only have the default security group that came with our VPC in which all traffic is allowed both on the inbound and outbound. But I'm going to create a new security group because I do want to have inbound SSH as an option, but I also want to have inbound HTTP as an option because that is how we'll be able to access our EC2 instance via the public IP address. So now currently with assigning this security group, these are the only two type of communication protocols that will be allowed through the security group to the EC2 instance. Next, we'll view and launch and launch the EC2 instance. Now, here's an additional security layer that I've not talked about yet, and this is the public and private key pair. This must be used for every instance that you create, and it is required when you want to SSH and log in to your EC2 instance after it has been created. So here's what you need to do. You can either choose an existing key pair or create a new key pair. We currently don't have an existing key pair in this account, so I'm going to create a new key pair. I'm gonna give this a name. I'll call it Essentials Key Pair. And I will download this key pair. 
It's very important. So it is now downloaded to my computer and I must make a note of where this has been downloaded to, which is just my default download directory. And then next, we want to launch the instance. And then we'll click on view instance. Now, what's happening now is that Amazon is now launching and configuring this instance for us. And it's gonna go through several stages and take a few minutes to be fully provisioned for us. So I'm going to pause the video and come back in about a minute or two once this is complete. Okay, welcome back. The EC2 instance has been fully provisioned and launched and has passed the status checks and is now up and running. So let's take a look at a couple of key components here in the EC2 console. And for that, I want us to look down here. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. There is some information we can gather down here, one being the public IP address, the private IP address. You can view the security groups here, as well as the availability zone that the EC2 instance has been launched in, the subnet that the EC2 instance has been launched in, and a lot of other information regarding various components of the EC2 instance. So now, since I used this bash script to install the Apache web server, on this EC2 instance, we should be able to get the Apache test page if I navigate to the public IP address. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Perfect, here we go. This is the Apache test page. So that confirms that our EC2 instance has been provisioned correctly and all of the connections, all of the routes between the EC2 instance and the internet, this being actually my computer that I'm accessing it from, from my office, is all configured, set up, and working properly. So now, let's take a look at how to actually log in to this EC2 instance. And for that, I'm going to bring in the command line interface, or the terminal here. So I'm going to pause the video and reconfigure the screen so we can fit everything on here at once. Be right back. Okay, I'm now back, and as you can see here, I've kind of squished the web browser up a little bit here, and I've made room for my terminal application so I can access the command line. In order to log into the EC2 instance, in this case, the Linux EC2 instance, to get the proper instructions, I can click on my EC2 instance and then click on Connect. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a set of instructions that I need to follow. First is that I actually have to change the permissions on the key pair file that I created and downloaded earlier when I was launching the EC2 instance. And so the command that needs to be run is the chmod400 command to change the permissions on the essentials key pair.pem file. But first I need to navigate into the directory that I downloaded the essentials key pair file to. Okay, and there we can see the key pair file. And actually I spelled that with an extra S, so I have to be mindful of that. So now I can literally just copy and paste and run this command to change the permissions. So the permissions have now been changed. And now I need to run this command here in order to log into the instance. If it asks you, are you sure you want to continue? Type yes. And there we go, I am now at the command line logged into this particular EC2 instance. So, just to recap, this instance right here, I am now logged in down here, and can do with it whatever I wish. Now, to log out of the instance, you can just type exit, and I'm now logged out of the instance. So that's just a quick overview of once you've created and provisioned an EC2 instance, or a Linux EC2 instance, that is how you SSH into the Linux instance so you can then do with it whatever you would like. Okay, so I'm now going to get rid of the command line. So I'm gonna pause the video and come right back. Okay, so now before I finish this lesson and end this section, let's take a minute to actually experiment a little bit with various connections with the route table, network access controllers, and security group to see what happens when I change any of those settings how it affects my ability to access my EC2 instance from an outside computer, which is what's happening here. So if I shoot over to the VPC section of the console, let's take a look at route tables. So currently, 
I'm being routed through this route table because the subnet, this public subnet that I launched the EC2 instance in is associated with this route table. And this route table has the internet gateway attached. So what were to happen if I were to come in here and remove the internet gateway from this route table? Well, my EC2 instance now no longer has a route to the internet. So if I refresh this page here, it's now just going to spin. This is just going to spin and spin and given enough time, it will just come back with an error. So if I go back now, edit, add another route, put the internet gateway back in, click save. This is still spinning, but if I stop it and refresh, it immediately loads the page right back up again. So the same thing can occur if now I go into network access control lists. Double check here, I believe that this is the network access control list that is associated with this subnet. And I can check that by going under subnet associates and see, yep, this public subnet one is associated with this network access control list. So I can go into the network access control list and if I click edit, and if I just remove the rule that allows all traffic inbound, the same thing should occur now. If I go back here to this test page and click refresh, it's just gonna spin and spin and spin and not be able to access the test page because the connection now or the route between the EC2 instance and my office computer has now been broken inside of the VPC. So I'll go back and fix this. And I'm showing you all this just to reinforce everything that we've talked about so far with VPCs and EC2 instances and all of the routing that takes place internally within AWS and how the components or resources inside the VPC are connected to the internet. So the same thing can be applied if I were to go to security groups. So back to EC2, I can click on security groups and this is the security group that I currently have attached to the instance. And by the way, let's just refresh this again, make sure, yep, that loaded right up again. Now, if I go to inbound rules, I see that I am allowing HTTP into the instance. So an HTTP is the traffic type that is being used when I'm requesting this test page using the public IP address. So if I remove this rule, then I should not be allowed to access the test page. So let's give this a try. I'll just take the rule out. I'll click save. And this should apply immediately to traffic coming in and out of the EC2 instance. So I'll click refresh now. And again, it has not loaded the page. It's just going to spin and spin and spin and spin and eventually load an error. So I can go back. I can add another rule, put HTTP back in, click save, and then refresh this again, and it immediately loaded the page. So this has been now a complete overview of how to launch an EC2 instance, then how to connect to the EC2 instance, in this example using a Linux instance and SSH as the connection protocol, but then also by using the Apache web server as a test platform to test the connection via HTTP protocol from an outside source, so from a computer outside of the VPC. And then we went through and I showed you several examples of how changing or disconnecting the routes via the route table or the network access control list or security groups can prevent connections. So always be mindful if you're having connectivity issues of the possibility of there being issues with your security group access, network access control list rules, and or route tables and internet gateways. So with all that being said, let's take a look at our Project Omega infrastructure requirements. So for this section, we needed a server to host and run Project Omega, and specifically one running EC2 instance using the Amazon Linux AMI, we have that. With Apache server installed, we have that and verify that we can access the Apache page, which we've done. 
So great, we have fulfilled all of the requirements for Project Omega in this section. So let's wrap up this section. This was AWS Essentials Section 5, in which we covered Elastic Compute Cloud, otherwise known as EC2. We covered an overview of EC2. We talked about Amazon machine images. We reviewed instance type components. We talked about EBS volumes and snapshots, how to use security groups with EC2, IP addressing public versus private. And finally, we launched and logged into an EC2 instance. So finishing up this section, we can go back to our main diagram. And next we're going to dive into RDS and DynamoDB which are the database services of AWS. So with that, we will complete this lesson and complete this section. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.